Namaskar, this is me Sam Sadhan Sari, your science teacher. We are here after a one week holiday of Dasai and I hope you have enjoyed it well. I hope you have refreshed your mind and ready to learn more things. So here we are going to learn the new lesson that is lesson 5 and it is from physics and it is about work, energy and power. So let's start to learn. So first of all, we are going to learn about work. Actually, what is work then? In our daily life, we do different types of activities. Can you recall some of them? Yeah, that's true. We read, we write, we walk, we play, we talk, we eat, we sing also. Are these all activities work? Can we tell that these all are work? Actually, the answer is no. In the language of science, these all activities are not work. To be work, there should be some certain conditions. So, what is work then? We define work as that activities in which a force is applied on a body and the body covers certain displacement in the direction of the force. So just now we saw that to be work there should be application of force and the force must be able to move the body to some certain distance in the direction of the force. So we know that displacement is the distance in a particular direction. So instead of saying distance in a particular direction we will use a word displacement here. So let's make it more clear. Suppose uh, the man is applying some force here on the box, but he is not able to move the box. So according to our definition, there is force, but there is no displacement. So is it a work? In this case, he has not done any work. So this is not work done. In another case, let's say, uh, suppose this man is applying force and he is also able to move the box by some certain displacement. So here we can see that there is force also and displacement also. So can you say, yes, in this case, he has done the work. It is work done. Hence, we can say that to do work, there must be application of force means there must be a force applied and then the object must move in the direction of the force. Even if the object is moving in opposite direction of the force, the work is not done. So mathematically we can say that work is equal to the product of force and displacement. So this makes our formula work equals to force into displacement. So let's know about the formula of work done. So just now as I said, since work is equal to force into displacement, the formula of work becomes W equals to F into D. So work is equal to F means force into D means displacement here. So displacement is the distance in particular direction. We can't say only distance because that distance must be in the direction of force. Because of that, we say it displacement. So W equals to F into D. And this becomes the formula of work done. What if force is not given? So we know that force is equal to mass into G, mass into acceleration due to gravity. So here M is the mass denoted as M and G is the acceleration due to gravity. And the value of acceleration due to gravity is uh, not fixed but on earth we take it as 9.8 meter per second square approximately we can take it as 10 meter per second square also all right so let's say it's a fix for now on earth it is fixed which is 9.8 or we can use 10 also so we can also write the formula of work as m into g into d 
if the force is not given but if the distance is given or displacement is given then we use the formula w equals to m into g into d where m is the mass g is acceleration due to gravity and d is the displacement okay but what if the displacement is not given and the object is moved upward so in this case when the object is moved upward means when the object is lifted in that case we will be given height and because of that the formula of work becomes work equals to mass into acceleration due to gravity into h h means the height here so similarly when one form of energy it changes into another form this is also called work done about it we will be learning more so work is also defined as the transformation of energy so what is transformation of energy we will be uh, learning about it but for now let's understand that transformation of energy is the change of energy from one form to another form and whenever this change of energy occurs there is work done so change of energy means also work done here unit of work what should be the unit of work here? the SI unit of work is joule okay and it is denoted as j and so what is one joule of work it is defined as when one newton force when one newton force is applied on a body and the force be able to move the object by one meter displacement so you can see that force is also one newton and displacement is also one meter and then whatever the work is done that becomes one joule work and therefore to do one joule work we need to apply one newton force and that one newton force must be able to move the object by one meter and that makes one joule of work all right so because of that uh, we conclude that the unit of work is joule it is denoted as j next we'll be discussing all the types of work so there are two types of work done we can do the work by two ways or whatever work we do that can be divided or categorized into two types so the first one is the work done against gravity and i hope you understand the meaning of gravity the pulling force of earth let's say is gravity so we can see here that the person is lifting the object upward okay so because of that it is going against the gravity gravity is pulling every object downward but we do work against the gravity okay because of that we can say that if the force is applied on the opposite direction of gravity we know that gravity is always towards the center of earth means let's say downward so when we lift any object upward then we are, we can say that we are doing the work against gravity hence here also we can say if the force is applied in the opposite direction of gravity then the work is done against gravity okay i hope it's clear so whenever we are lifting any object upward we are doing works against gravity all right here example is lifting a body second type of work done is the work done against friction frictional force if you remember is the force that opposes the motion of an object and it always uh, it is always applied backward or towards the opposite direction of the motion it always stops the motion of an object all right so whenever uh, the force is applied in the opposite direction of the friction so if you see this object if the object is moving in this direction the friction is applied in this opposite direction so whenever the force is applied in the opposite direction of the friction then we call that the work is done against friction against friction means opposite direction of friction so once again i repeat this if the force is applied in the opposite direction of friction then the work is done against friction so you can see in the figure also whenever the work is done by pulling anything or pushing anything okay like pulling and pushing is both in the opposite direction of the friction so whenever the work is done by pushing or pulling any object then that type of work is called the work against friction all right now next we are going to learn about energy 
So we know that to do different types of work, we need energy because we need to apply force and to apply force we must use some energy. So the capacity to do work is called energy. Actually energy is the capacity or ability to do work. If we have energy, we can do work. If we don't have energy, we cannot do work. So once again I repeat that the, the capacity to do work is called energy. The unit of energy is same as that of work because work and energy are nearly same. As much energy we have, only that much work we can do. So the unit is also same, that is joule. One joule energy can do only one joule of work. So one joule energy is that amount of energy which can lift or slide one newton of a body by a height or distance of one meter. So that amount of energy which is required to do one joule of work we can say is one joule of energy okay so this is the definition of one joule energy now types of energy there are different types of energy but among them we are going to learn only few of them so these are the first is mechanical energy second one is chemical energy third is heat energy we also call it as the thermal energy then light energy, sound energy, then magnetic energy, electrical energy, and then finally nuclear energy. So we will be learning about all of these types of energy, but in our next video. So till then, just read your book and prepare questions for your live classes because we will be meeting in live classes to discuss about whatever confusions you have here. So till then, thank you. Stay safe and keep learning.